Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Wednesday, March 21st, 11.36 p.m. Mountain Time, 2018. I'm showing you the sea ice thickness for coming from the Danish Meteorological Institute. Here we see the Arctic sea ice volume. In the last three weeks, the amount of ice gained in the Arctic is 3,000 cubic kilometers. That is 1,000 cubic kilometers per week, every week, for the first three weeks of March. Now, why is this important? Because it is at a higher rate than ever seen in modern history. It is more indicative of the ice gain in the beginning of the season after the melt-off. So look at the slope here in October, November. That is the slope we're looking at here in March a very rare slope to be seen in March. In fact, never to be seen, never has been seen in history. These are the, this is the slope you, typically occurring between October and December when ice is forming. This is a new type of ice forming never seen before in modern history. And it's a thick ice that extends from one continent to the other across the Arctic Circle at a thickness of 15, 12 to 15 feet for the entire distance coming all the way down to the southern latitudes at over five to six meters in some of these pocket regions. This is a very thick ice pattern. We are building multi-year ice. This is the first year this is happening and it's happening in a very big way. There is no warming in the North Pole. There is record ice growth indicative of the early fall growth every other year. Just an observation, and you've observed it with me. Let's see, check out Al Beto, who's not a fraud, absolutely showing us snow cover over 85% north of 45 degrees, snow extending all the way down south here towards Georgia. By the way, guys, it's spring everywhere in the world, if you don't know. The ice will max out sometime in the 1st of May here. We're going to be watching for its maximum extent. If it keeps maximizing past the 1st of May, we're going to be seeing a new pattern. So we're going to watch it together. As the nor'easter number four starts to wind down, you're looking at a shot of University City in Philly. I know this exact spot. I've lived there. <laughs> Winter Storm Toby is starting to wind down, at least in the western suburbs. The snow, however, is still falling all over New England. By the time it's over, 11 inches of heavy snow are expected to hit the ground in Philadelphia. Heads up. Look at that picture there. 30th Street Station, totally buried. It's springtime. Pretty rare event for Philly. Breaking all records in Philly. Crushing them. Oh, it's not here, and I'm not going to waste time, but the last record was just several inches. We're going to get to some more destroyed records. More than 4,400 departures and arrivals were canceled, canceled at airports in the region as snowfall totals more than a foot were recorded in several states. This fourth nor'easter in three weeks, blanketing the I-95 corridor, dumping 19 inches in Winbur, PA, 15 in... Sabalesville, Maryland, 14 inches in Sweet Spring, West Virginia. The Gas House District of New York saw 8.5 Wednesday night, while 5 inches had already fallen in Central Park. It's still falling in New York. Uh, let's take a look at some more of the numbers. As the Nor'easter moves towards New England, heavy snow bands coming in New York City. Um, Connecticut right now as I'm making the video this guy with low profile tires there's a school bus in the creek and accident after accident 45,000 without power is an understatement we're going to show you 80,000 plus in New Jersey alone live here are the heavy snow bands hitting Long Island it's going to slowly move out uh, to the north and to the east here starting to hit central Connecticut overnight with up to a foot of snow here in this region. So we're going to see the numbers by the morning. And this baby is still going. So as of just this is about an hour ago, the snow is starting to pick up on Long, Long Island in New England, with, which earlier had been spared. Snow is falling at a rate of 2 to 3 inches per hour in parts of Long Island and up to 1 to 2 inches per hour in New York City currently. <laughs> 
And there's not, this is not all over the news. They are definitely keeping a lid on this, or this would be breaking headlines everywhere, and you're not hearing it. As the power totals go up, it just said 40,000 in that headline. Here is 77,000 live without power, New Jersey alone. Guys, and if you could see the graph here starting at 2 p.m. today, here we are now at just after midnight, which is where I'm at. It's spiking again. This is not done. This is going to keep going up at this angle. Notice how it keeps steepening. This is not peaked. We're going to peak at about 150 to 200,000 without power in New Jersey alone. And these blue numbers are Atlantic City Electric, just one company. So Atlantic City Electric, probably over 100,000 losses of power as we get into the more early morning hours. And that is only one company in one state. So we're probably looking at half a million people without power right now. And the media is just not getting the numbers because they're hiding the information from us. Huh because this is record-breaking weather. They don't want you to panic, folks. The panic is going to happen naturally. It's going to be a natural pattern as these events continue to unfold. Winter isn't going down without a fight. Last night's snowfall broke Louisville records. Louisville had the snowiest March 20th and 21st on record, according to the National Weather Service. 3.7 inches beat the 96 3.4 inches. And at 7 a.m. Wednesday, Louisville had more than an inch of snow, crushing the snowiest day on record, March 21st, going back to 1885, which, if you follow the channel, you well know is a solar cycle, bringing us back here to the lowest cycle 12 in the centennial minimum back in 1885. Very similar to the same spot we're in right now, heading into cycle 25. So as history repeats itself, the mass media is slowly picking up on it, and we're covering it every day so you can follow what's going on in layman's terms and tell your neighbor. Because without the help of your neighbor, you're not going to make it through the coming times. Dulles hits record snowfall, doubling the previous record set in 1964, doubling it, and there's barely any snow. Dulles hits a record snowfall for the 21st, 4.7 inches, crushing the 2.3-inch record set in 64. In Maryland's Bloomfield and Frederick counties reached 13.1 inches of snow. Columbia and Howard counties reached 6.5 inches. Norbeck, Montgomery County, 5.2. Cheltenham and Prince, Georges County reached 6. And on and on. Look at her face. <laughs> she just saw the murder. As the storm winds down, I doubt it, two to three inches per hour on, western, on eastern Long Island. That doesn't sound like a wind down. It's winding down in the Lehigh Valley, however. She is not too impressed with what's going on here. This storm broke all records for March 21st in this area, crushing them. The 13.5 inches that fell South Allentown by 7 p.m., is eclipsing the record of <laughs> just a few inches. Now, the record for the date was only 4.3 inches, and we're talking 13.5. And that was back in 1964. Heads up. And if I got to chuck a fish at you, I might just have to do it because that's the first snow boom, which it's spring. And do not stare at your square while this is coming to you. <laughs> There's an idiot right there, and that's a boom. I'm sorry if you're watching the channel right now. You know you're an idiot. The National Weather Service said the storm broke the Lehigh Valley snow accumulation record for March 21st by destroying it. The record for the date was 4.3 inches. The record was broken about 2 p.m. Wednesday when Lehigh Valley International Airport reported 6.1 inches and there were still several more hours of snow to come. By late afternoon, the highest amount reported was 14.5 inches, totally burying the 4.3 inches by almost a foot of extra snow. The train spotter in McCunchy Township used social media posts showing 13 inches in Zionsville, around a foot in Lower Mukunji, and at the same time, 15.7 inches was reported in Milford in the springtime in Pennsylvania. 
Now, mudslides are feared as a strong Pacific storm heads towards weary Southern California. Unfortunately, we have the GFS models and it does not look good. Over 30,000 people have been are under mandatory evacuation in the Thomas Sherpa and Whittier Burn areas in Santa Barbara County, along with 2,500 in Ventura. This is really blurry. Just looking horrendous. She's sitting by the muddiest stream possible. She's about to be swept away and she's a total idiot. Here I am standing here by this mud stream about to be swept to my death. You should not be doing this. I'm standing here because I'm an idiot and I'm doing it to get a raise. See, people like me need to stand in harm's way in order to succeed in the world. We're not stockpiling dry goods like beans and rice, which we should be. We are working our tails off 24 hours a day and we don't see our family at all. It's part of the empire slave model that's quickly coming to an end as we witness it. And that is a heads up, fish style, right to the face. Boom! And guys, put your cell phones away when trains are coming or you'll be the next casualty. Maybe we don't need you in the next phase anyway. Just like that one. Check the GFS models because it's getting serious. They're not telling you about it. They're not warning you. They don't want you to panic. But if you see this model, that's right now. This is three hours out, six hours out. Do you see what's happening here? Okay, we're doing the video now. And this is very dangerous. And right on the cusp of it is a major snow event that's hitting the Sierras that's going to last well into tomorrow night. This is 1800 Zulu Thursday, which is about 6 p.m. West Coast. And it's going to change all to snow. This is a thunder snow event unlike the entire length of the Sierras has ever seen. So you guys are going to see some amazing things. Catch some footage of the shocks and the booms. You're going to start with hail and end with 10 feet of snow. And if we just quick come over to the precipitation totals here, let's check out the total snowfall. If we just run it through here, 24 hours. This section of the Sierras goes off of the chart here, which is at 4 feet. Here's 4 feet. So some of these areas are going to see seven or more feet of snow because on the composite uh, models, they're showing seven to ten feet in some regions. And this is just in the next 24 hours. So there's more snow going to be sitting on top of that. Central Idaho looks like it's going to have some heavy snow. The entire Cascades over the next three days. Just a continuous event here, moving down into the Four Corners region, supplying northern New Mexico and this region, which is in heavy drought with much needed water. That is good news for those regions, bad news for these regions. <laughs> Look at these idiots. Idiot number one filming it, idiot number two texting her bow. I wish I had a fish sometimes, just... Why can't there always be fish flying through the air? I love that. Heads up. I wonder how much rice and beans she has stockpiled. None! <laughs> so this is what's happening in the first week of spring. Um, basically, the West Coast is going to tilt with the weight of this heavy, wet snow. There's going to be high avalanche warnings. Massive loss, loss of life and casualties. We're going to be reporting over in the next 48 hours. It's an unfortunate thing. Start praying now. The watches and warnings are now uh, exclusively here on the coast, <coughs> which is good news inland because they've had plenty of snow this winter, and it is spring now. Here are frost and freeze warnings all over the south. So heads up in these regions, if you have sensitive plants, they should be covered by now. The entire Sierra is under winter storm warning. Here are the flood watches, hydraulic events all over the west, and it is just beginning. This is going to be a week of winter storms impacting the northeast, New England, an inclement pattern over the west, causing loss of life, mudslides, avalanche warnings, and heavy recharge of aquifers.
Remember when they told you that it was never going to rain again here in California? Well, those people are full of it. Every single prediction we've made here has come true. Stick with the winners. It is not the three hottest years on record. In fact, the temperature has dropped globally by half a degree C in the last three years. And that is something to take note of. If it continues to drop at the same rate, we're going to hit baseline in the next two months, which is going to bring us back to the temperatures we're experiencing in the in the 1970s. So that's a heads up for the reality of what's really happening on the planet using science and chucking a fish right in your face, right in the face of the mainstream, because that's about how it's going to hit everyone right like that. When it comes to community near you, boom, it's going to be like fish in the face. Hey, I don't have any lighters, but there's no electricity for a month. But what am I supposed to do, man? I need to get cigarettes and like, what about my, I'm supposed to play uh, on a tournament tonight on, what about my Netflix, man? But I paid my bill. Earthquake swarm under Mount Rapuhu in New Zealand. We've been watching these swarms. This swarm occurred at the same time there was a swarm happening in Washington State. So that's definitely a galactic cause here, probably because of the perturbations coming in from that minor geomagnetic storm that hit us just the other day because of the magnetic field hole that opened up during the uh, March equinox we're experiencing here. So an episode of volcanic earthquakes is occurring beneath uh, Rapehu since the 15th. It is quieted down, same thing, quieted down in Washington State. But as the cosmic ray flux increases, this is probably going to reawaken again. So that's a heads up to you people in New Zealand. If you're in that region, be prepared for a major earthquake because during grand minimums, you have two eight magnitude or greater earthquakes uh, historically every single time. So you need to, we're, we're in a drought of two. We have a worldwide uptick in moderate 5.0 or greater earthquake activity along the Pacific Rim, including right uh, here, uh, the Bandar Abbas Iranian earthquake, 5.0 kicking off. Here's a major quake, 4.3 in Hump, Iceland, associated with the Bartabunga and the volcanoes in that region. And we have a large banger at 3.1, in Utah, could be fracking related, but could also be related to the swelling of the Earth. As the cosmic ray increases and the magnetosphere wanes, we're going to have more Birkeland current energy pumping into the center of the planet. And it's one of the ways we gain mass, folks. Real quick, let's end this up. 30 treated for exposure as Indonesian volcano belches fumes. One we haven't heard about. This is Jakarta. 30 people were treated for gas exposure after Mount... Jin in eastern Java belched toxic fumes from its crater, Indonesia's disaster agency said Thursday. I'll leave you links to this article. It's just more volcanic uptick worldwide. Come over here to Volcano Watch. We have Dukono, Sabancaya, Reventador erupting in the last 24 hours, as well as Santiago, Fuego, and Aoba, Sabancaya. So, Lots of activity, and as the KP is dipping down into 1 and 0 range uh, for the next 24 hours, we should have an uptick in more volcanic activity and earthquake activity worldwide. Now, if you come over to Volcano Watch here, which I'll leave you a link to, subscribe if you haven't. Let's get them to 10 grand. And they've got a new live stream up here, uh, which they need you to like and say hello because we're live. And just tell them what's going on. They love it when we're live over here. But you can see Shimodake uh, venting quite nicely, and there's some activity here. So as the cosmic ray flux increases over the next 24 hours, as the KP decreases, maybe Shinmo will have another event here. We have some venting at Sokorajima. Uh, just moments ago, we were watching an eruption down here at Sinubung, which is quieted down. But still, you can see the gases outgassing here. 
Torrealba is always active, and when the sun sets, it is gorgeous here in the glowing uh, caldera crater area. There's a Yellowstone cam and a Popo cam. Popo's been active for the last week, glowing amazingly, and it just happens to not be doing that for us right now live. It also could be cloud cover. But typically, there's popo activity. Take a look over here at Shinmolake and the other volcanoes. Give them a thumbs up down here at their new live stream and say, uh, Diamond at the Oppenheimer Ranch sent you. That's a heads up. New solar minimum could change the world economy. Well, really? Yeah. People are going to be eating themselves. The sun is the source of light, heat, and well-being for our planet. As crops fail, global unrest ensues. You better be prepared for what's happening. You don't have two years. Think of it as a six-month crash course in proper prior planning to prevent piss-poor performance. You should be stockpiling the necessities. Had a great conversation the third week of March Preparedness Month on our radio program over at Revolution Radio tonight. And I'll leave you links to the mainstream catching on to what's about to happen. What do they know that we don't? D.C. officials flocking to doomsday camps. This coming out from Zero Hedge today. According to the Washington Examiner, a building network of backwoods doomsday camps around the country are pulling in members from affluent areas and even Washington national security officials as the threats grow from nuclear war, EMP, virus attack, and the Grand Solar Minimum. The most talked about dubbed the Fortitude Ranch you'll be getting links to, as well as the article I just talked about. The Fortitude Ranch is a survival community equipped to survive any type of disaster and long-term loss of law and order. Managed by full-time staff, Fortitude Ranch is affordable, $1,000 per person annually, to become a large number of members and economies of scale. Now, the Fortitude Ranch allows you to vacation there. There's preparedness vacations and weekend retreats, and it is booked, baby. So come here and check out what the elites are doing uh, so that they don't care what happens to you. They're going to be hiding in a bunker. Let's talk about the pet, 10 best meat rabbit breeds for homesteads. Guys, rabbits are going to be the key to surviving and thriving in the future. I know they're cute, but they certainly breed like rabbits. <laughs> and there's a fish to the head. She breeds like rabbits too, and we need less of her. Rabbit meat is very commonly consumed. It's low fat. It is the best, cleanest white meat around, highest in nutrition. New Zealand wheat uh, whites here, these cute little bunnies, 9 to 12 pounds. You can have two, male and female, and within months have thousands of rabbits. That's going to feed everyone in town. So Get the lowdown on the California rabbits, the New Zealands, the American chinchilla. Uh, a lot of people in this area do the browns. Uh, we do that one right there. Uh, this is a big version, the Flemish giant. But rabbits all around, easy way to go. They produce quickly. You can feed them local weeds and shrubs. They're vegetarian. Um, great source of meat and pelts and other products. And also, if you're in a more of a suburban setting and you're not allowed to raise livestock, you can have a male and female rabbit separated waiting to be put together for when the SHTF event occurs. And they'll start breeding the moment that happens. In a few weeks, you'll have hundreds of baby rabbits. In a few months, you'll, be, you'll have hundreds of pounds of rabbit meat. Help you survive and thrive in the future. It's the type, it's the way we need to be thinking as we descend into the grand solar minimum. So the next three years are going to be the most extreme climatic shifts ever seen in modern history. And an event could tick off in the next three years that will fry the grid for a very long time. If you were listening to the radio program tonight, you will know that you are not going to be warned about what's happening. And the majority of people are just going to wait around for things to turn back on. What happens when things don't turn back on? You should be thinking about this scenario in your head. It should be a nightly, daily, weekly narrative that you go through in your head. What happens if the grid turns off and never, ever, ever comes back on? What do you have to survive and thrive? Could you make it? Do you know how to cook food using wood and matches? Do you even have matches? 
Would you be able to survive and thrive if the grid went off and didn't come on ever again? This is the way you need to be thinking moving into the future. The events are unfolding before your very eyes. There is limited time to stockpile supplies and food to keep you and your loved ones safe. You need to be locating community, like-minded people that understand the nature of the science we're talking about. You're not going to be warned by the powers that be. If you don't know about the disinformation campaign that began hundreds of years ago, you haven't been watching. Be safe, everybody.